Let's take a quick look at Shutrised by Osprey Games. What a wonderful solo experience with great art and quick gameplay. Hey, this is the McGuire Review, and today we're going to be taking a look at a new one again out of Osprey Games called Shahrazd. Now, before we do, uh, this is the 2017 catalog for Osprey Games. Got some pretty cool artwork on it uh, that was in the mail for me. They are going to have uh, quite a few pretty awesome board game titles coming uh, over the course of 2017 uh, that were in here, and I am pretty excited about. So as those do release over the course of 2017, uh, hopefully we will have uh, most of those on the channel. But for today, we are looking at Shahraz, and I'm just going to read you what's on the back of this box and uh, cue this up. So Shahraz must tell her tale to survive the night, but maybe you can help. Working together or alone, you must tell the best story you can in just 22 tiles. There are riches in store for those who earn the favor of the king. But if you tell your tale in the wrong order, life will get very difficult indeed. Each beautifully illustrated tile features a different fairy tale from around the world. Shahraz features 22 story tiles and two scoring tiles as well as solo and cooperative rules. This is a one to two player game. I love that you can actually solo this and right into that time, 10 to 20 minutes. So this one's a pretty quick game that you can hit for lunch breaks or as a filler in between uh, board game sessions or just if you want to travel with this. Uh, it's a quick little game and you can solo and it is a great solo experience. I actually really like the solo experience on this particular title and 12 plus. Now I would say this is a very simplistic game. Again, like all Osprey titles, uh, I am very pleased with the form factor uh, of the game as well as the material of the box. It's a really nice high cardboard as it always is. Right off the bat, we've got the Shahraz uh, little book here and it is very, very short. Just a, just a few pages you'll see there that you'll go through that will queue up on how to play this game. It's got some artwork on the front, just some um, copyright material type stuff on the back. And then they did include this little um, thin uh, piece of uh, paper that sort of separates the book from the game. I thought that was a nice little touch just to make the packaging a little nicer. And then inside you're going to find the tiles for the game. And that's pretty much the only thing you're going to find in the box. It is just that simple. So I will go ahead and dump all of these out. And I'll show you the inside of this box. It's got a real nice sort of... Uh, a henna type uh, flower you know artwork on it that I thought was really nice that they took the time to put that on the insert what we'll do here is show you first the scoring tiles because those are the only tiles in the game that are going to be different than the rest of the tiles that we have here uh, and each tile does have you can see this nice sort of purple background uh, artwork that's on it and that is the same for the back of each one of these and then you're going to get these two tiles here. And these are the scoring tiles. So one side will have the two-player uh, little score matrix, and it will list out the little victory. Um, it's not the victory conditions. It's really the, the victory score. So you don't really technically lose this game. Um, you just get a score that could be not a great score or a score that could be really, really good. And that's another thing that I really like about this game from a solo perspective is you can keep working to get a better score and a better score every time that you play. And I was surprised with the depth of this game because as we see here, when we'll start laying out the tiles and I'll kind of run you through the basic mechanics of this game, it's very, very simple. Um, you're only doing one of two things every time it's your turn. So uh, very simplistic from a mechanics perspective, but there's a lot of strategy and depth that's built into it as you go through the two rounds that you'll use to play out this game. So back to our scorecards here, uh, side for the two-player, side for the solo, and I'll just go ahead and read the solo side here. And the two-player is, is the same uh, as far as um, how it lists out the scores. It does have a little bit of a different verbiage, but here on the solo side, uh, as you're scoring yourself, you're going to get a score 0 through 9, 10 through 19, 20 through 29, 30 through 39, and 40 plus being the best. And with each one of those categories, it gives you sort of a sentence that says, this is kind of what, what you've accomplished. So we'll look at the lowest, 0 through 9. That didn't make any sense. So basically, you're building kind of a story as you're playing this game. Now, these tiles you aren't strapping together in the, uh, I would say, 
traditional sense of building a story with the story tiles and then telling that story you're really trying to get colors to match numbers to be positioned in the right spot so you can get the highest score essentially when you score yourself at the end of these two rounds so we'll read the 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 top one here it says 40 plus truly wonderful and there's you know a different uh, you know, sentence attached to each one of the scores in between that, that kind of step up to that truly wonderful score. And what you're going to do, and what the reason why they've given you two tiles, you'll notice there's a little matrix here. It's on the back of this tile. So you're going to take one of the tiles and you're going to set it kind of on top of that little matrix, and you'll, you'll see a, an axis, both X and Y, and you'll just put that uh, tile right where it fits you know, where your, where your score is, and, and that's how you track your score over the course of the game. So that's that's essentially how these tiles are going to be used, and it's just an easy way to be able to see right what your score is without having to include another you know, scoreboard with another little token that you would sit on it. You could just innovatively sort of use these two tiles together to give you that score. Let's get to the main tiles of the game, and I will say the artwork, again, is fantastic in this particular title. It's one of the reasons that I really like this game. After you start to get all these tiles laid out, uh, it just really paints uh, kind of a kind of a beautiful picture. It's a very it's a very beautiful game, just in the uh, the style of the artwork. It's not necessarily just in the colors. I mean, the colors are very vibrant, but each one of the tiles does represent, and each tile is individually different. Uh, there isn't two that are alike. They do have a nice artwork on them. They do have a number, then we'll talk about what that number means when we get to scoring. And they've got some little numbers across that will tell you all of the tiles that are, are this same color. Uh, and this one's called the star. They each have a little name up top. One of the unique things about this game is that every one of these tiles tell a story. Every one of them is a fairy tale, and it's a fairy tale from around the world. So you're going to have a lot of different cultures that you're going to see fairy tales from within this deck versus just more uh, traditional Western or traditional American fairy tales. You're going to see fairy tales uh, from Asia and from different parts of the world uh, that are built into this. And I, and I like that as well. It makes it a very kind of diverse game. And uh, you get to experience some other fairy tales maybe from other different parts of the world that you may uh, not have heard of before or know anything about. And you can get online and look them up if you want to. Uh, I did myself on a couple of these because I just thought the artwork was pretty cool on some of them. I'm like, hey, the star, what, what's that about? It's got a flying train like, and then like a bird and it's kind of going into space. Eh, you know, something fun to do. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to shuffle these tiles up and you're going to start with one tile. So we'll go ahead and set one out and you're going to go ahead and flip it over. And then each player is going to get two tiles. So let's say we had two players and we'll set their tiles out there. Those two players are going to look at their tiles, and you can just go ahead, and it is a cooperative game, so you can go ahead and look at those tiles, and then when it's your turn, you're going to do one or two things. You're either going to, one, place a tile, then draw a tile, or two, you're going to pick a tile up that's already on the board, and you're going to replace it with something in your hand, still drawing a tile. Now, the next time it's your turn, if you did pick one up off the board uh, and place another one down, what you're going to have to do is place two tiles on the next turn you will still draw a tile but then you will be one down from your uh, hand max of three tiles so that's kind of the trade-off there if you want to replace something that's already been put down on the board now let's say that I wanted to take my turn and I wanted to place a tile uh, I could place that tile basically anywhere around the tile that's here so I could put it at the top I could put it at the bottom, or I could put it at the side. Now, if I put it at the side, I put it halfway down the side. And the reason is because as you lay these tiles on the board and you build it out, you're, you're going to kind of, the, the sides, you're going to want to put two on either side as you kind of build that out. And that's the reason why you would do that. There is a max for how many tiles can be in a column, but you can build as many columns as you want as you go through the deck when you're playing the game. So let's go ahead and say that I wanted to set this tile right up top. That's where I'm going to put this. Now the strategy to laying these tiles as you go through will come into the scoring. Whenever you score this, and we'll lay out a few, so that would be my tile placement. I then would draw a tile. Now let's say our second player goes here, and I'm going to go ahead and set this tile right there. And then I'm going to draw a tile. And let's say another person went. Okay, and we'll, we'll just kind of go another... A quick round here and we'll just put these in in any uh, certain order 
draw a tile and let's say that the game continued to play out that way and there was quite a few more tiles that got laid we'll just go ahead and put some tiles out here just for our example so it is clear how scoring works which we will take a look at here in a second all right so let's say that are that would be the amount of tiles that we would have um, for this particular round let's say Let's say the round was over and that's how many tiles we had laid out. What we're going to do then is we're going to go through first and we're going to see if every tile, and we're going to start here on the left side, we're going to work right. Every tile that's before a tile, that number has to be less than the number that it's connected to. So that's the first main part of scoring. So I got a 0 and I got a 21 here. Well, the 0 and the 21 are both connected to the 17. Well, 0 is less than 17, so it stays up. 21 is not less than 17, so it gets turned over. I would also compare that 21 to the 18 here because it's actually connected to both of these cards, but it's bigger than both of those, and it only has to be bigger than one of them that it's connected to to have to flip it over. You flip it over, it's not going to be worth any points for you. So that one's down. Uh, now we're going to move here. So 17 is not less than 1, not less than 9. 18 is not less than 9. 18 is less than 20, but it's not less than 9. So actually both of these cards get flipped over. Okay. Now what we're going to do is go here. So 1's less than 2. Good. 1's less than 8. That one stays. 9 is not less than 8. So that one gets flipped over. We look here, and 20 is not less than 7, so it gets flipped over. Uh, 2 less than 12, 2 less than 14, good. 8 less than 14, good. 7, 7 is connected to nothing, so we're good. So now we can see that these tiles here um, got flipped over because they were in the wrong order of numbering as they were placed. So there's a level of strategy to make sure you're placing these numbers in the most strategic way as you can, knowing that you're going to have to lose those cards if they're not properly positioned. Now what we're going to do is make sure that we can make a clear path with every type of card that's still left. Well, this card now can't really get to anything because it's blocked off. There's no clear path, so it turns over. And all of these cards are good. There's nothing that's stopping a clear path for any one of these cards. Now what we're going to do to be able to score is we're going to give ourselves points uh, for every group of cards that are t that are positioned together that are of the same color. So here we can see that we do have these blues that are positioned together. We have these yellows that are positioned together. So that would give us points, which we then would record on our scorecard here before we start round two, and round two being the final round. So now that we've done that, we would then remove the tiles that got taken out from that round. They would go back to the box being no longer used. Uh, we then would select one of the columns that were left. Uh, and if there was any spaces, you would kind of compress those down. Let's just say that I wanted to keep this column here. So these would be taken out and removed. We then would have our deck again. Uh, and you can shuffle that up if you'd like to. And then you would deal out your two cards for each player to continue the second round. And you would just play that second round in the same fashion, where you then would decide, well, do I pick up one of these cards and replace it with something in my hand? Or do I just lay a card with something in my hand and then draw a card? So that's how the game's going to play out. And after that second round, you're going to score the same way. And then that's going to be your final score for the game. So that's Shiraz. I think it is a really good game. I would highly recommend this. Uh, again, I think it is a good cooperative game. It's definitely a fun lunch uh, game filler. But I have a lot of fun with this game from a solo perspective. Uh, again, because you don't... Uh, really lose per se and it does play out very quickly from a solo experience you can definitely play a game within about 10 minutes and it, it is fun to sort of uh, you know pull it out and and try to play to get that ultimate score i have not been able to hit that 40 plus yet uh, but but it's sort of it's one of those things that uh, from a from an addiction perspective, you really want to try to master this game and get that 40 plus points uh, to get that best score in playing this. I will say from that perspective, is it, it is addictive. 
uh, and it is a lot of fun. Definitely go out and pick this up if you come across it. It's again, it's a very low price point uh, right here. MSRP, it's got 20 bucks for the U.S. I'm sure you can even find it cheaper than that uh, out there in various uh, third-party retail sites. But it does come in a good price. It's a lot of fun. Pick it up. So hit that like, click the subscribe below to join the team, ring the bell. This has been the McGuire Review, and we'll see you next time.